Hi, this is Dan Marcel, and welcome to Tell Me About That Day, the show where we tell stories about one day that changed a person's life forever. My guest today is journalist Linda Torado. On May 29th of 2020, Linda was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, covering the protests four days after the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man killed by a police officer who knelt down on his neck for more than eight minutes. May 29th is also an important day for Linda because that's the same day a police officer shot at her with a foam bullet and Linda lost sight in her left eye. If you'd like to reach out to Linda, or if you're interested in seeing some of the photos she took that night, the details are in the description below. Thanks for listening. Walk me through this. It's, it's May 29th, 2020. Where are you? What are you doing? And then just sort of walk us through that, that whole day. Friday was the first night of the curfew. Um, and it's important to note that press was supposed to be exempt from the curfew. Right. Like that, was, right. that was supposed to be how it worked. Um, and I was taking pictures of a car burning in a, in a parking lot in, a, I think, a Wells Fargo. Um, and we got some protesters just kind of came running towards us from down the street and they clearly had been gassed. And I asked, did they give you a warning? They said, no, they didn't give us any warning. They're gassing. So I put on my, um, a, a respirator and my goggles and I went to go take pictures, but I've got like a big flash. I've got my cr credentials on, I've got a respirator, I've got goggles, like I'm moving with authority. I clearly know what I'm doing. The moment it happened, did you realize like you, you were taking pictures and I've seen the photo that you posted the moment before it happened. So you were snapping those photos and then you, you feel the projectile hitting you or did you realize what had happened? I didn't like, I realized I'd gotten hit with something. Um, I didn't really have any conception that it had hit my eye just because like the, um, my eyebrow was so swollen and bleeding and the gas is so irritating that like any pain I would have felt like, and you don't have that many, um, uh, nerves in your actual eyeball. Um, and so I didn't really have any conception of what had happened to my eye and I didn't realize like, cause I knew it was going to swell so bad. So the swelling didn't scare me. Um, the fact that I couldn't see out of it didn't scare me. I like, I really thought it was just a laceration. Plus I got gas to the face. Like yeah. I didn't really understand what, what had happened. Um, and I don't actually recall taking that last series of photos that I posted. Oh really? Um, yeah. Like the story I had been telling until I went back and actually had a chance to go through the photos, which was about two weeks later. It was a, uh, well, about a week later was that I'd been lining up my establishing shot, mm -hmm. which is always, um, if I'm in a situation with police and gas, I always try to get a shot of the cops coming out of the gas with their cars behind them. Mm -hmm. Um, because the, the, depending on the nature of the gas that they're using, the particulates make a different color rainbow. And so, like, you actually get this really creepy horror beauty kind of coming out of it. Like, that's like super, like, Mad Maxi goth shit. Like, and and also, it's good for a reference later because you can be like, oh, that's purple. That was CS. Yeah, so oh, that's orange. That was, you know, the, and it helps you kind of pin down. You know the, your tear you know, gas. I, I unfortunately have opinions about which chemical weapons the police use on me domestically that are banned in international war. It's a uh, part and parcel of being a journalist these days. It's a fun country we live in. Um, after that, I, I like my, my goggles came off. Um, and I have this laceration isn't probably very clear on video now, but it was pretty good. Uh, bumped the eyebrow and that bleeds real freely. So between the, you know, gas and smoke in the air and the, you know, blood, I just started yelling, I'm press, I'm press. Um, and protesters came and physically took me um, and said, we're going to take you to the medics. They took me to a medic tent, patched me up, they put a, you know, cotton ball with tape or something over the, the head wound and I uh, took me to the hospital and I was in surgery I think within an hour of the injury and then I woke up the next day and the doctors were like okay mixed news you don't have COVID we had to test you before surgery but you are going to be blind and I was like well cool um it's good to know I don't have plague I guess I'm um, getting shot in the face is one way to get medical care in America and I got to say, in terms of keeping your spirits up, you seem to take into Twitter and sort of acting against the, the trolls. The, the phrase on the internet is don't feed the trolls. Don't give them people, don't that give people the attention. That power, because then you have to read it and you have to scroll past and you have to like have a response or be able to like have a wisecrack and be like, oh, I don't want to 
contribute to this toxic internet culture. Like these are dudes up in my DMs telling me they'd still fuck me even though I'm disabled now. Like you bet your ass I'm gonna come bringing the dick jokes. Like why why would I not? Wow. Oh God, yeah, no, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty bonkers. Um, the some of the stuff is is pretty. Uh, even even I, I worked in a porn store and it we wouldn't have sold. Like it's it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty outre, man. Wow. And, uh, I'm sure you've answered this before somewhere, but do you regret going? Oh hell no. Hell no. We're gonna have to take my other eye. And then even then I'm gonna, I got a loud mouth. And, and you kind of know going in that those things are inherently risky. Like it shouldn't have been the risk that I face because like, there shouldn't be a question of police firing at head level. There shouldn't be a question of police firing at close range. There shouldn't be those questions. But if they're going to do it, somebody needs to get it on film. And if somebody's going to get them doing that on film, somebody's gonna get caught. Like, that's just how it's going to be. And it's unfortunate and it's wrong and it's unconstitutional, but they don't seem to care that much about that right now. Like, the, the powers that be don't seem that engaged in being sure that this behavior is cracked down on because I think it's more something like 350 some odd incidents of like... It's 400, it's 400 plus now. I, I checked it earlier today. Yeah, see, you've got better numbers than me. And, like, that's only the press. Like, that's not even protests. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I think that it's our job to go out and do it. And I think that, um, you know, I'd be up there taking photos again right now if it didn't, um, if I was sure I wouldn't be a danger to anybody. I'm getting tried again, tattooed over the scar. Like, I... <laughs> no fucking way they stop me are you kidding me like that's because then then what did i do it for like if i was just like oh i got hurt let's go home and like what was i covering oh the extrajudicial killing of a black dude by armed agents of the state and i what take a boo-boo and go home like i do want to ask are you planning on getting other than the tattoo are you planning on getting a patch and if so is it just going to be the regular black patch or is it going to say something are you planning something okay with? well see there are different schools of thought yeah, like there's this is a raging debate in my mentions and my family. Um, like my youngest is allowed to say um, f when she's saying f police brutality. Like she she's because and okay. so right. Well, you know we got to give her like a little bit of language for there's this. A, yeah, there's a baseline. There's a baseline. Right, and like I have I have a a, a poster in a. a fan actually made me a woodcut of a printing press and it says this machine kills fascists and it's yes. in my dining room yeah and it's in my dining room and my kids mm -hmm. have grown up looking at that every time we eat dinner right so like the, they, they're aware and like she, my kid comes up she goes mommy mommy I think you need two things I think you need a very sparkly eye patch for when you go talk to presidents and then I think you need one that says um the police for when you go out again on work and how, I was like how well, old is your how old is your daughter seven. She's seven. She's seven. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes, mommy, mommy, do you get a whole wardrobe? I want to be your eye patch coordinator. I'll match everything. She's, and then she goes, cause you can't match your clothes very well, but I'm really good at it. I'm like, thanks baby. I appreciate you. The, the biohacker community has taken me up as a bit of a cause. So like oh. this guy is like, I'll give you a bionic eye. Like, I'll, it's straight up. You want a cybernetic eye? Let, call me. We'll build it. Whatever you want. Fucking lasers, cameras, personal local area networks. Like, just all Could up in the eye. Could you get a camera in a false eye? Yeah. Yeah, you totally can. And you can also get a pinhole camera with three-hour battery time on 4K into an eye patch. So, like, that's where we, like, the middle ground that I, I got. Because I was like, I don't think I want an unlicensed surgeon putting things in my eyeballs right fair, now, like, fair. generally. And he was We're like, not yeah, at that point in 2020 yet. We're not there yet. Yeah, he was like, okay, no, I, I get that. It's new for people. People are scared. And I'm like, I, yeah, that, that's what it is. I'm, I'm definitely, <sighs> yeah, I'm a little frightened of that. Um, but, no, we compromised. He's making me, like, a badass journalist eye patch. Um, so we'll see how much mischief I can get into because like it's actually this amazing legal question of like if it's adaptive disability equipment is that subject to search like how how far can oh. you? it's adaptive disability equipment like I I don't know how much can they search you like Linda you and I are going to do a part two once you get that <laughs> eye patch I, I want exclusive rights this is this is it right now I'm calling it 
<laughs> yeah, like I, wow. it, who knew I was going to be a, the, you know, pondering what, how many ways can I test the Fourth Amendment? All right, Linda, I won't keep you too much longer. Uh, tell anyone who is watching, do you have a, a GoFundMe, something that people can do to support you? I know you've got medical bills like crazy. Anything at all? Um, yeah, uh, my Patreon is patreon.com slash bootstrap. Um, I'm on Twitter at Killer Martinis, and honestly, I've just been letting people kind of Venmo or PayPal me, like, if they want to help out, because um, I think I, I don't want to take away um, the, I, you know, there's a lot of people with their eyes shot out. It's, like, a, a, a frightening amount of us with our eyes shot out in the last two weeks, um, and a lot of those folk have GoFundMes up, and I don't want to bring a larger audience to bear in that same marketplace. Like, I think that that would be... I don't know, like, it's hard. Yeah, um, but no, yeah, I mean, if you want to toss 10 bucks in my Venmo, I'll make drunken eye jokes on Twitter for you. Like, that's fine. Okay. Linda Toronto, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, the, the stage is yours. If there's anything you want to say, anything you want to plug, you've, you've got free reign right now. Uh, yeah, give money to Black trans ladies, pay into bail funds. Um, make sure that you are giving money to uh, food banks, not your shitty canned food, actual money. Go buy shit tons of diapers and deliver them on the streets. Just throw diapers out with signs that say free diapers. Somebody will come and get them. Like, do everything you can in this moment because this is a very strange moment in history. And if we don't get each other, we're all fucked. I'm not bleeping that last one. <laughs>